G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. A bit of a follow-up video of sorts, I guess you could call this one, to last Friday's Technics SBK11 video, the speaker video I uploaded last Friday. It was either late Friday afternoon or early Friday evening. A viewer emailed me, as always, get me on the email, regarding the audio of their video camera. Now they have the same video camera I have, but they're like, what did you do to get the audio sound a lot better? Um, well, for starters, I don't use an external microphone. It's simply just EQ, and I thought I'd show you exactly how I do do it. All right, so in DaVinci, all I do is bring in the Technics video. Don't change. All right, so essentially, this is how the video is when I import it into DaVinci, and the way I fix the audio up is just to use... shelving EQ that's basically all it is and then what I've done and I, I sort of fiddle with this a little bit depending on how the raw video coming off the camera is actually recorded okay but generally speaking the default frequencies that I've picked and look this isn't the best way of doing it trust me it's definitely not the right way but it's my way so if I bring this down a little bit further, so you can actually see the EQ curve. What I do, um, and as I said, these are the default frequencies I use. So it's 150, 150, So it's 150, 440, 1K35, whoop, and 13K5, okay? Now with DaVinci, it's only a four band EQ, and I'm only using shelving EQ. Technically, I could use parametric with a Q, all right, and, and open the frequency up, I chose to use shelving because I can bring up the bottom end a bit more, all right? As I said, this isn't the right way of doing it. Ideally, you'd probably use either a parametric EQ or just band passing. I use shelving, okay? It's not a cut. It's not a low cut or high cut or high pass or low pass. It's simply just a shelving EQ, all right? As far as the gain is concerned, I quadruple I double in a bit and then double double. Okay. From the existing input level. Okay. So I go up 12 dB here. All right. So quadruple. Remembering that 3 dB, oh, I'm going to get clobbered for saying this because people are going to be like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about doubling. <sighs> I know this sort of, I can't believe people don't know this. 3 dB, for every 3 dB you go up in volume or 3 dB you go down, it's either doubling or halving, all right? Remembering that you're working in FS, okay? You're not working in anything else other than FS. So if that is 0 dB on the input signal, I've gone up 12 dB, so I've, quad, I've essentially quadrupled it, all right? For the 440 hertz, I go up 4 dB, so double and a smidge. And then I go up, I double the last two frequencies. There. So you can see your EQ curve, right? Now remembering, the audio off this by default is terrible. All right, now I haven't set up um, replayability here to show you but if you watch the videos from the video camera that's the eq i use now occasionally though right if it's windy i'll muck around with these two i may even go to a low pass or i'll notch it out or use a parametric or even just shelving it do a low pass shelve okay but i just do 
low filter, high filter, and that allows me to bring up the bottom end. Um, obviously, look, if I had the ability and I had more, I had six bands of EQ with parametric capability, remembering you, you don't really want to go over four, you can get away with six, but going to eight is problematic because you start encroaching on frequencies either side of the center frequency. Um, I use that for me. Now, does it get close to what I do here at the desk? No, it's not close, but it's better. If I was to spend a few hours maybe doing even ADR, I could get away with it, right? Um, the problem is when you ad lib and you don't use a script like I don't script, doing ADR is difficult, okay? Um, so... I, I could do ADR here at the desk and then overdub, you know, cut the audio out, right? Cut the audio out and drop in the ADR. It's too hard. It's easy to do ADR if you're reading from a script. It's more difficult to do it when you ad lib. And that's just common knowledge, right? So with the video camera, I double, or sorry, I quadruple, double a bit, double, double the output. Now, if the if if the cam if the microphone on this camera was the same as my Shaw mic running through the Yamaha and then back into the PC, I wouldn't need to use the clip equalizer, right? I, I wouldn't have to do any EQ. Okay. Sometimes though, if it's windy outside, I might put a, a Da Vinci compressor over the top of it out of Fairlight. I might, <coughs> but generally speaking, I don't. And then what I do is, once I've got the EQ done, normalize it to zero. And you can already see a small increase in the, in the output volume. Okay. So that's, that's basically how I do it, guys. It's just a simple four band shelf EQ. It's nothing, it's nothing more than that. Um, bringing up, and you can see the frequency curve here drops off at the upper end. And the reason it drops off at the upper end is the microphone on this has a very high frequency at the top end of the frequency spectrum. Okay, so that that's that's basically how I do it. I do fiddle around with it. Like sometimes I'll bring that back to 125 and 13 dB. Okay, or, you know... I mean, I very rarely move from that configuration. I usually use this as my default, okay? As the default position for the EQ, all right? But it doesn't always work like that. And sometimes I do fiddle with it depending on where I've been recording. Now, if I've been recording, you know, out there on the table out there, I can run with 154.40, 1K35 and 13K5. If I'm in the garage, the same thing. But if I'm out with the 80 series, different story. I've got to do, I've got to change those frequencies. But the base frequency pattern that I use is that. So that that's it. That's essentially how I make this camera sound a bit better. So there we go. Bit of a follow-up video. Stick around. Another video coming up for you later. Have a good one.